team like Kyrie and KD Or the Lake Show with King James and AD Wish I could match him up with the bad boys from the 80s But no black and white, I need that in HD Yeah, dog Yo, what's good y'all? It's your boy Ant Hen Dog and we back to it. You know how we do it. Kevin Durant and Draymond Green's beef bled from an encore dispute to free agency decision. This is my second uh, beef video. Uh, the first one I have was the Larry Bird and Bill Lambeer one. And then this is the second one. But before we get into it, help me out man. I need y'all help. If not subscribe, go ahead and hit that button. And if you are, I appreciate you. You a real one. But yeah, let's get into it. I really don't want to do too much talking. I want to see how they kind of explain this beef. Because the only thing I really remember was the one time when Draymond was running up the court and he didn't pass the ball to KD. And KD got mad at him. And then I think uh, Draymond caught him a B. Or, I don't really remember exactly what happened, but I definitely remember that little beef right there. And I think that got something to do with KD being in Brooklyn now. So let's get into it, man. We got Kevin Durant and Draymond Green's beef bled from an on-court dispute to free agency decision. Let's get it. Draymond Green and Kevin Durant were teammates on a super team so super it threatened to ruin the league. <laughs> they won lots of accolades and a couple of championships together. But with one teammate being more than a little insecure and one teammate being more than a little outspoken, there were some bumps in the road, too. One of which may have just influenced the future of the franchise. Uh-oh. Let's get into it, man. Draymond Green is an emotionally passionate, assertive player. As a rookie in 2013, he didn't let the fact that he was a second-round pick keep him from talking a little trash to Kevin Durant, who was coming off a finals appearance. Not to say that was a point of beef between these two. It didn't bother Katie. It just surprised him. I bring it up simply to say, Draymond isn't afraid to get in anyone's face. Green's loud passion bolstered him as he grew into a three-time champion all-star who serves as a beating no. heart, the emotional leader of the Dynastic Warriors. Yeah, this video came out, I think, a couple years ago, so it's a little older, but the, the, the beef still stands, or it still happened, I should say. Everything that happened in this video still happened, so I think it's still good to watch it. Not bad. Now, sometimes his emotions got the better of him, like in 2016 when he screamed at coach Steve Kerr so loudly reporters outside the locker room could hear. Mm. Or later in 2016 when he got suspended for game five of the finals because he had accumulated too many flagrant fouls. Two of which were groin shots, I feel like that's important to include. Because it's funny and because it illustrates that sometimes Draymond is too much. Alonso. And I think that uh, they they both get like kind of per, portrayed by the media as Draymond gets portrayed as this very loud, um, I'm going to cuss you out at any given moment type. Uh, he get that type of persona. And KD gets that, I'm insecure. I'm going to respond to everybody. I, I hate what's going on. I just want to play basketball. I hate the media. Like that's kind of how the media portrays him. So I think it's great that they both have their own podcast where they can just go on there and just talk how they feel. So I'll hopefully after I react to this one, I want to react to both of them actually explaining what happened with the beef because I'm sure they didn't both came out with it. And I think that'll make it make a better video after reacting to this one. Side Draymond in the front court, we have Kevin Durant, one of the best, if not the best basketball player on the planet. But for all his talent, He's still shown some insecurity at points Brush in his career. Hair. You know what they say, it's not easy at the top. Sheesh. And while I've always thought they've said that to keep me down and docile, Kevin Durant proves them correct. After nearly defeating the Warriors with OKC in the 2016 Western Conference Finals, Durant joined the champion Warriors in the offseason. Yeah, before we get past that, let's talk about that for a minute. OKC and the Warriors. They, they met in the Western Conference Finals and went seven. Uh, OKC was up three to one. Russell Westbrook, uh, Serge Ibaka, KD, they were up three one against the Warriors and lost. And let the, let the Warriors come back and beat them. And then KD goes join them, go and join them the next season. Like, how do y'all feel about that? Do y'all feel like that was a, a punk move? Do y'all feel like that was a, a soft and, you know, he, he shouldn't have did it? Or are you looking at it from KD perspective and it's like, hey man, 
I am what 25, 26 years old. I want to win championships. Like I've, I've scored as many points as I can. I, I prove that I can score 30. I prove that I can score 40. Like I don't really have nothing else to prove except I want to win championships. And would you rather people complain that you went and joined a team to win championships, or would you rather people say that you're not that good because you never won a championship? Like you're gonna you're gonna get uh, criticized either way. So which one would you rather? Uh, you know, you'd rather have people talk about, it. and I think that's kind of how KD was thinking it when he decided to go to uh, Golden State. Like they're gonna they're gonna talk shit regardless. So are they gonna talk shit for me joining, or talk shit for me never winning? Creating an imbalance in the league. Instead of sticking with the underdog that was still a finals contender, he joined the team that held the dog's head underwater. KD was soundly criticized for the decision. It was considered a cop out, tantamount to cheating. Fans burned his jersey and they likened him to a cupcake, both being soft and delicate. And KD got insecure. He couldn't really handle the criticism. I'm not trying to be an armchair psychologist, I'm just trying to put words to what happened next. Kevin Durant used a burner account to pretend to be a random person defending Kevin Durant. Fair to say, this guy takes criticism pretty hard. So, starting in the 2017 season, we've got a very talented but insecure guy and a very talented but sometimes too passionate guy as teammates. Mm. How'd it go? Well, in January of their first season together, Green yelled at Durant when he missed a contested three at the end of a close game. And Durant accepted the critique. Maybe he felt bad about missing the three. Maybe he felt like a new guy who should listen to his new team's emotional leader. Either way, the whole thing ended with a double high five, so no big deal. About a month later, KD had a bad game, he shot two for ten, and Draymond again yelled at the superstar. This time, KD stood up for himself, and leaned over for himself, okay. too. Okay. This certainly looked, smelled, and tasted like beef. You've got teammates getting between them and everything. But on Snapchat, Draymond said it wasn't a story. He's saying blah 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 to the Bleacher Report article, not Postmates. I bet his Postmates order was incredible. He's rich and he needs lots of calories for sports. I'm positive that there was nothing blah about that order. The <laughs> Warriors weren't harmed by the star's spat. They finished the 2017 season 67-15, and 15, lost just one game in the playoffs, and took home another championship. Now, here's something interesting. The following season, there was some evidence that KD saw Draymond's criticisms as constructive rather than something to get upset about. In May, they lost Game 3 of the Western Conference Semis. KD didn't play great. In the middle of the night, Draymond sent Durant a, quote, long-ass text, in which he did not hold back, telling KD he needed to... I rock with Draymond and all, like, he's a Hall of Famer, I think. But it's just like, why do you feel like you gotta say something to KD every single time he has a bad game? Like, I get it you wanna be this leader, and you wanna be this guy, but... You can't tie KD's shoes. So why do you feel like every time, you know, he's not playing up to par, it's your job to get on him and cuss him out and send him long ass text messages? Like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, like I said, like, it's one thing to be a leader, like to, to up your teammates, you know, to to be that 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 guy for them. But to also try to go a little overboard with it and like try to like, I guess he's trying to make himself more important than what he really was. In a way, I mean, I could be wrong for this. I could be wrong, you know. Debate me. Debate me if y'all if y'all feel like I'm wrong. But I just feel like Draymond was trying to do too much to try to, like, show his value uh, towards KD. Like, KD didn't really need him to be doing all this shit. Like, KD is, KD is good. He's all right. Like, he don't need Draymond to be sending him long-ass text messages because he went 8 for 18. Like, he don't need that. But let me know what y'all think. Step it up. KD responded with a simple, I got you. And while a three word reply to a long text message is usually the sign of a brush off, it wasn't, it was genuine. Durant went on to score 38 points in the game four win. Who could have thought the guy with burner accounts could respond to criticism so well? Oh, and by the way, the Warriors went on to repeat in 2018. They looked like they were gonna run the league for a long time. Although one thing, that summer, KD signed a contract that gave him slightly less money in exchange for the option to leave the very next offseason. Mm. And there was a lot of talk he was going to take that option. On a different team, he could be the primary playmaker instead of just a very valuable piece of the offense. And 
And not to be overlooked, winning a championship with a non-super team might silence all the hate he got for joining up with the Warriors. From the very start of the 2019 season, there was tons of KD free agency buzz. The press loved asking him about it, and teams loved making overtures to him. Some felt KD egged on the stories, or at least didn't do anything to shut them down, which was kind of a selfish move. The buzz surrounded not just him, but his entire team. The Warriors were in a constant state of unease, needing to court him while thinking about what to do if he didn't return. Clay Thompson and Draymond Green were going to be free agents shortly after Durant, and now they had to field questions about what they'd do if KD left. But Golden State said the free agency frenzy wasn't a distraction as they vied for a potential 3 p and by mid-November, they were 11-2, and two, so yeah, they're fairly focused. But resentment was brewing. On November 12th, KD and Draymond got in another on-court shouting match, but this one was a little different. The earlier incidents all started with Draymond criticizing KD. This one started with KD criticizing Draymond. Uh oh And that was too much for Draymond Green. He Let's go to the video tape. Hairbrush. The Warriors were tied with the Clippers in the final seconds. Draymond grabbed a rebound that KD certainly thought he was about to catch. Draymond then either ignored or didn't see KD clapping madly for the ball and took it up court himself, where he proceeded to fall what down as time expired. Then the yelling happened. KD told Draymond to pass him the fucking ball. Draymond took offense at being told what to do like a scrub, and he reminded KD he wasn't a scrub. In fact, he won a championship before oh, KD shit. got to Golden State, remember? As if Durant could ever forget. Draymond also called Durant a bitch several times and brought up one more subject, Durant's free agency. This was so they said that, that, that KD was very insecure, but this just kind of proved to me that Draymond was pretty insecure too. All KD said was pass me the fucking ball, pass me the ball. And he started calling him a bitch, say I already know you one foot in, one foot out. Like he started just like airing out all this stuff that was way bigger than him just not passing KD the ball in that uh, fourth quarter. So that kind of shows that Draymond was a little insecure as well. But I don't know, man, let me know. Let me know what y'all think. constructive criticism. Unlike their arguments in the past, this one carried into the locker room after the game. Green laid into Durant, accusing him of perpetuating the free agency media circus. Ladies and gentlemen, this time, we've got beef. This time, we got beef. That night, GM Bob Myers and Steve Kerr met with Green and told him to apologize. Draymond doesn't like being told what to do, as we've just seen, and he did not agree to apologize. So, Kerr and Myers suspended him without pay for one game. This was a surprisingly harsh punishment. In 2016, when Draymond screamed at Kerr, he was just privately fined a couple thousand dollars, and that was it. But something as public as a suspension? That was going to make waves. The media, fans, and Draymond himself felt the team just sided with Durant. The next night, Durant was asked if he was surprised by the suspension and didn't give the media an inch. I was just focused on the game. I didn't really care either way. Um, I was just focused on trying to come out here and finish this back to back home. Though, he did admit he and Draymond hadn't made up yet. Hey Kevin, have you and Draymond been able to hash anything? No. In fact, Draymond later said Durant might have blocked his number. This beef had implications on the future of the franchise. Was the fight so severe KD would leave? Were the Warriors trying to recruit Durant by taking his side? Was this an effort to set up Draymond as the scapegoat when Durant inevitably left in the summer? Had the Warriors just alienated Green, who would become a free agent himself in 2020? Were the Warriors even the Warriors anymore? This was a team that was built on unselfish play. Their motto was strength in numbers. And now an argument about who got the last shot was unraveling them? Three days later, Green and KD finally talked. Seeing the onus of making up was on Draymond. He accepted responsibility for going too far, said he supported Durant no matter his free agency decision, and insisted the team would be just fine, which they absolutely were. Golden hey, State Draymond. finished 57 and 25. I love Draymond though. Like, I don't want to sit here and feel like I'm just like all the way siding with KD and all this because I, I like Draymond. He's, he's from Michigan. You know, he grew up around the area that I grew up in. 
Uh, he was an underdog. He's not really supposed to be where he is. Like, he's overachieved. So, like, I appreciate him all in that sense. But I definitely feel like he deserved to be suspended. He was just, like, just kind of doing too much. Like, and it's hard for me to kind of, like, say that he's doing too much because for him doing too much is why he is who he is. I always say the same thing with Patrick Beverly. Like, they may do too much, but if they toned it down and just worried about trying not to do so much, they wouldn't be the players they are today. So that's just kind of how I feel about that. Rolled through the playoffs to the finals. They didn't win at all, but KD had a devastating injury in game five. A couple weeks after losing the finals, KD signed with the Brooklyn Nets. There was speculation he left Golden State because he was jealous of homegrown hero Steph Curry or because he wanted to prove he could get a ring without a super with team. But Durant claimed a couple different reasons for leaving. One, he never felt totally included with the Warriors. He wasn't jealous, but he felt like an outsider. And his second reason? That'd be the fight with Green. Draymond didn't buy that at all. He was sure if KD wanted to leave because of him, the Warriors would have said goodbye Draymond <laughs> real quick. After all, they'd taken Durant's side once before. But in his comments, Draymond was careful not to fuel more beef. In the same breath he essentially called KD a liar, he said he loved him. About a year later, Draymond was a guest on Durant's podcast, but Ooh. it wasn't some big showdown. They were affable, relaxed, and made us wait nearly an hour into the podcast before even addressing the fight. Hey, D, bro. Host Eddie Gonzalez made it very clear it was no on? longer a sore subject. Y'all have reconciled. Y'all have buried the hatchet. Y'all have had conversations. Green's position was this fight could have blown over like the others, but management and the media made it into a bigger deal than it was. It was their fault. He's kind of ignoring that the argument spilled into the locker room and got pretty personal, but fine, fine, fine. KD agreed management and the media blew it up, but he also got on record that Draymond crossed a line during the argument, though he wasn't trying to harp on the issue. He went too far in one of his little joints. A couple weeks later, KD went on Draymond's show and said definitively he did not leave because of what Draymond said during the fight, but because of management's reaction. It wasn't the argument, it was the the way that everybody, Steve Kerr, act like it didn't happen, Bob Myers and tried to just discipline you and think that that would put the mask over everything. Now, that's a little different from what he originally said when he left the Warriors. So what y'all think that, because I don't know if KD ever like said what he felt like they should have done, but he said that the fact that all they did was suspended Draymond and then that was it, he didn't like that. So what would have been the alternative? What do you think they could have done for KD to be like, okay, I appreciate y'all for doing that. Um, so we good now. You think he, he wanted them to release uh, Draymond? That's kind of what it sounded like. like. I don't know. But if that's the line he's taking now, if they're going to go on each other's shows and be pals and laugh, then that's the reality we live in. Just don't let them fool you. There was real beef here. It was. Even if it was just one argument over one final shot, even if outside forces heightened it, and even if they've since put it behind them. Great video! Shout out to Secret Base. I've, this is my second one. Like I said, this I did the Bill Lambert and Larry Bird one. Now I'm doing this one. And both of them have been great. Both of them have been great. So I appreciate y'all for watching this video. Especially if you're still watching right now because people's um, attention spans on YouTube is terrible. So if you're still watching right now, you a real one. Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all think about this beef. Do y'all think it was a real beef? Like, I honestly think it was. Like, like the stuff that Draymond said, like you're not supposed to say that to Kevin Durant. Like it's one thing to be like, bro, you gotta get more aggressive, like this and that, but to be like, you one way in, one way out. You a bitch. We won before you got here. Like saying shit like that, and you're Draymond Green. You're not Steph Curry. Like, like, come on now. You gotta, you gotta simmer it down a little bit, Draymond. But hey, that's 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 who makes him who he is. But I appreciate y'all for watching this video. Make sure y'all like this video. If y'all like this video, and go ahead and write something in the comments. Let me know what other videos y'all want me to react to. But I appreciate y'all like always. We out.